The GTA port on GBA doesn't have the attention to detail Rockstar is known for. The game is nostalgic, it's amazing that you have GTA on a GBA, but the game itself lacks the experience you would expect from a GTA game. Also I have to mention that this is not a port, this is a standalone game. It has a different story from GTA 1. And it's pretty poorly written, it puts you in the role of a guy named Mike, when the game opens you and another guy named Vinny want to escape with a bunch of money, but the escape goes bad and Vinny is a victim of a car bomb, and I kid you not, this is Mike's expression when Vinny blows up. So Mike sets out to find Vinny's killers and make them all pay. Along the way you'll go on a lot of pretty standard missions, including taking out specific enemies, checkpoint racing, blowing up stuff, stealing cars, but even if it doesn't sound all that bad, the problem is the execution. The game lacks humor, emotion, the text dialogues are pretty soulless most of the time, there are some exceptions though. As a comparison from GTA 1 and 3, you don't get the barf and fart button like in GTA 1, <laughs> Instead you have vigilante missions, if you hop in a cop car, taxi or ambulance, you can do those missions. The game has a hundred hidden packages for you to find, every tenth package adds another item into your hideout. What is the most annoying during gameplay is that the camera is too boxed in. It's so zoomed in that when you go at high speeds with a car, you can barely avoid oncoming traffic. The developers have tried to duplicate the radio function by giving each different car type its own music, but it didn't work out that well. Also mission objectives are pretty unclear. Overall the game is rather a gimmick than a must have. It's nice to have GTA on your GBA, I mean it's still GTA, you can free roam and have fun in this game too, but too bad that the story, the missions, the immersion, the attention to detail is not present in this game like we got used to. Don't get me wrong, it's still a good game, but it has flaws and since we have been spoiled with so many GTA titles that were masterpieces, this one falls short. But in spite being the worst GTA in the series, it still has a lot to offer and is graphically impressive. And it's fun to play if you just cruise around and make some mayhem, but if you want to play the missions of the game, you will quickly see how bad and frustrating the game can be. Max Payne on GBA is a marvelous port of Max Payne on the console. Of course, the tiny handheld can't handle the PC game, but the devs managed to cram the experience onto the tiny console using other strategies. Sure, the audio and visuals look and sound like they are coming from a can, but considering the technical capabilities, the developers did an outstanding job. The game even has the same basic action and level structure as the original game. It follows the plot as the original. And gameplay wise, the game is a pretty good isometric shooter. You have a nice arsenal of weapons. The mechanics work out surprisingly well, you also have the slow motion shooting parts like in the original. As for problems, in some cases enemies can be easily seen and you instantly get shot when you enter a room, because you didn't even see them. Also the covering system is pretty complicated in an isometric shooter, you never know when you are behind cover and when you are in the open, and this can lead to some frustrating moments. But aside of this, the game is pretty good. The game is also fairly decent in length for a GBA game, the game takes you around 4 hours to finish. Overall, the game is great. It's a really good isometric shooter with great controls and a great port of the story and of the original game overall. The only downside is that because of the isometric nature, in some cases you don't realize when you are behind cover and when not, and this can lead to some frustrating moments. But Aside of this, the developers are to be praised, because they managed to reinvent the mechanics of Max Payne and port them into a tiny GBA console, which is not even close to the horsepower a PC or a PlayStation 2 has. Smuggler's Run on the GBA is another port, 
this one wasn't well received by the players. It doesn't come close to the original because it's a downsized version of the original and it's pretty much too much downsized. The game is okay at first but becomes bland pretty fast. The 29 missions included on the Game Boy Advance version are described by some as being boring, tedious or too easy and yes they are easy and maybe that is a bad thing for many and even for me that seeks easier games I found the game bland. No matter if you are under time limit or race against an opponent you just have to go after the arrow take the package and deliver it. There is no strategy involved, you just follow the arrow in some bland environments. There are four environments of such. It's nice that the terrain looks 3D, but graphics alone don't make the game worthwhile. It's impressive from a technical standpoint, but since the gameplay is so bland, you won't be playing it for much. Midnight Club Street Racing is just plain bad. It's a good translation on the GBA, but not a good adaptation. Let me explain. The game is an isometric racer, you have the free roam, you have checkpoint races, you even get a sense of speed and feel the weight of the car. Which is pretty unique, I haven't felt that in other racing games on the GBA. But in spite all of that, the game just isn't fun. On the contrary, it's infuriatingly frustrating. When you race, you have to follow the arrow to the next checkpoint. Don't even try to find shortcuts. What makes the game so challenging is that the camera is so boxed in that you can barely predict incoming traffic, let alone follow an arrow while also competing with AI opponents that go like on a train track on the right path. The best strategy to win in this game is to trail behind AI opponents that know the track and hope to overtake them a few turns before the finish line. Customization is non-existent in the game, you get 40 cars that you can unlock and that kinda look boring, at least in my opinion. There are a few that look nice, but among the 40, most of them just don't look that interesting to me. You get two cities to free roam in, New York and London, you don't get a battery save option, just a password save. Overall, the game is bad, the gameplay is too complex and frustrating. Isometric racers on the GBA usually are simpler and don't require you to navigate a free roam city looking at a pointing arrow while also avoiding incoming traffic that you can't predict and see only a split second before bumping into it. Isometric racers on the GBA usually put you on a track. They are simpler and more fun. But hey, if you are up to the challenge and want to get frustrated, I think I found the game for you.